This is Chris from All Guns 101 and today we're going to show you how to clean a Browning Auto 5. Uh, this is my personal 12 gauge. Uh, I've had it for many years. Make sure it's empty. Uh, the gun was manufactured in 1942. So the reason it's been painted is because I use it for for hunting and I also use it for waterfowl. Also, uh, the bluing was almost 100% gone, so I painted over it to uh, try to preserve the condition. Uh, like most 12 gauges, uh, we never clean them. So let's uh, show you how to disassemble and clean a Browning Auto 5. So once again, make sure always the gun is safe. Nothing in the chamber, uh, nothing in the mag. And for the Browning, there's two ways you can clean it. Uh, first way is if you have a bore snake, 12 gauge bore snake, you can just slide it through, pull it out and remove all the contamination. If not, uh, what I have here is just a quick attach for a uh, Hope's uh, cleaning rod, which I don't use the handle just because that the 12 gauge barrel itself is not very long. So this will do me just fine with the adapter for the 12 gauge brush. So I'll show you how to disassemble it. It's very simple. Apply pressure to your thigh. And then from here, you have your magazine knob. So with the pressure applied, you're able to loosen it. And just be careful while doing so because you don't want to re release everything and let the spring go because uh, there is tension on this, don't forget. Just give it a minute here. Uh, I would suggest adding a little oil to your threads just to prevent it from binding up as it's doing for me. Not a heavy amount, just a, a very light amount, just to give it a little bit. It's coming now. As we can see here, the threads uh, are quite dirty. So like I've told you in the past in other videos, make sure to clean your guns. It's very important if you want the longevity and if you want them to uh, properly work because if I just look inside here and run my finger, yeah. So uh, like I said, it's a 12 gauge. It's not an accurate gun in any sense or form. It's uh, for waterfowl, skeet shooting. And I think the last time I shot this gun, I went skeet shooting and I shot about 300 plus rounds through it. So uh, to this point here, disassembly to clean is very simple. You remove the barrel as you see, slides over and out, and that's the majority of your disassembly. Uh, you can, and I, I won't go into it because I've done it once before and it was a pain, disassemble this firearm into pieces, individual parts and pieces. Uh, it's a very big procedure and it takes quite a few hours to put it back together. So uh, same as always, we're gonna use our CLP break free. Uh, give it a few shots down the barrel. And the fun of it, the 12 gauge is that you can really see it foaming up, which uh, on other firearms that I showed, you don't see it as well. So we'll go into our 12 gauge brush very important. Thread it on as so. Uh, with the 12 gauge, what I recommend, is we'll just move this to the side here. Put something at the end of the barrel, just because that it is a big brush and it's going to shoot a lot of shit. So as we see, it's all the way in. I still have lots of room for my fingers without crushing them. And I would recommend doing this several times uh, just because we're going to continuously have black powder residue come out. Uh, if you have, I would recommend getting a mop. Uh, it's basically looks like a little cotton swab, but it's uh, perfect for shotguns. I do not have one. I used to have one and I uh, seem to have misplaced it over the years. But that would be the best because with that you could actually get in there and, and really soak up all the crap on the sides of the barrel. So we're just going to keep passing the patch through. What you, you ideally want is a mirror finish on your firearms. Uh, like I said, this is not 
any type of precision firearm. This is a burst shot uh, duck. You can shoot a slug through it. It'll get you about uh, maybe 50 yards. Uh, besides that, there's no real point, if you ask me, to try to make this in any way, shape, or form. But there you go. You can see all the uh, contamination, as I'm going to call it, in the barrel. Make sure when you uh, unthread, because this is two pieces here. It's an adapter. So we'll keep the adapter on. We're just going to unthread our rod, our... Uh, brush we'll put that away for now for the patch itself uh, what I like to do is I like to give it another shot down the barrel just to help the process help it get nice and clean grab ours 10 gauge to 16 gauge once again this is a, a like I said in another video eBay kit I think I paid ten dollars for a thousand patches uh, you can't go wrong with that so I'm gonna pass two at a time just because it's the size that we have. And we're just going to push it all the way out and right there you're going to see how dirty your firearm actually is. Uh, that normally you don't want that in your guns <laughs> but like I said uh, it's a shotgun it's not the end of the world it's not going to do anything really. It will on a, a rim fire or center fire firearm it will change your characteristics of your bullets it will change the accuracy as well because now you're you're, you're giving it something to have a build up on and uh, same same as always just run your patches try to get it as clean as possible uh, you know it doesn't have to be perfect like I've said and what we'll do after this I get the last patch here I'm just going to flip it over because it still seems to be clean enough to run through on the opposite side so there's still dirt there's still shit but I'm not going to fuss too much it's just to get the majority of it out uh, I always take a look down the barrel make sure that it's clean that you can see that there's no cracks no damages Maybe for once you guys will see down it, probably not. Uh, it looks pretty good. I have a small scuff that I can see on the inside, but it won't affect anything. And for the secondary part of the Browning Auto 5, what I recommend as well is let's grab this section. So this is your guts. Uh, in here, it's always good to pass a patch it's not too bad but even like I said on your threads uh, you get a lot on your springs normally I would give it a little dab oil uh, make sure everything moves freely you don't want anything to bind up see here it's a little tight so we're gonna take just one of the dirty patches I had go over the threads just to get the excess unburnt powder off we're just going to put this in here, which I'm just going to show you here. We're just going to run our finger in, get on the firing pin. Watch out when you do that. Make sure not to uh, close on your fingers because it does hurt like a bastard. So as we see here, not too hard to take apart. These just slide on and off. You can remove your spring section and clean down your magazine tube because that will also have oil on it mixed with gunpowder so you could always just clean those off as well and I would say usually when you want to store your gun for a long period of time uh, or you don't plan on using it for a while you could give it a bit of a heavy coating of oil uh, like I said not too heavy because the heavier the coating of oil it won't prevent it from rusting it will actually help it rust faster so there's the threads I was talking about they're still in very good condition there's nothing wrong with them but just give them a nice good clean uh, if you have the tap uh, which looks like a one inch tap which uh, I'm not going to start throwing out numbers because I don't know them but I would say run a tap on it so we're just going to reassemble now just as before like I'm going to show you it's very simple to put together nothing complicated about it 
And before I do this, I'm just going to put the gun here for a section, sec, uh, second. And I want to run that same patch with a little bit of oil in it in the female part for the threads because then we're going to get everything out of here as well. So we're going to have a, a clean mating process. And in here is you're going to have a lot more crud because this is where all the threading action goes. So in here as well, I would say little dab oil just to help break up anything loose. Uh, you could run a brush through it if you care to. Uh, it's not the end of the world if you don't. It's just to help you the next time you want to take it apart. So to reassemble the firearm, we're going to go back to our thigh, your barrel. As you see there, there's a groove. So we're going to put this over this. It just slides into place. So what it's going to look like when it's fully seated, it's going to be about here. It's going to be all lined up. You can push down as much as you want if it's easier for you to reassemble it. You don't need to. You have the wood, which same thing, just slides over everything, comes back. And will give you your zero position if you want to call it that. You could always take off your uh, shoulder strap if it's easier for you. I like to leave it on just so I don't lose any parts. And then from this point on, we start threading everything back together. So the importance here <coughs> is to make sure your barrel is seated properly before you go out and shoot your gun. Uh, make sure everything is tight, nothing's sticking out, nothing's loose. Because don't forget, it is a firearm, it is dangerous. You don't want an accident to happen. Um, oil, like I said, keep it oiled, not too much, not too little, make it nice and tight. There's a little bit of play, but besides that, that's all there is to it to clean a shotgun. So now it's fully reassembled, we can close the action either by slowly releasing or doing a fast release. So with that, that is how you clean a Browning Auto 5. Hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe.